So, I'm with my friend Jim here. Well, Johnny. <laughs> and we're studying Z's thoracic outlet in relationship to the roots of the brachial plexus. I think this is really important, really cool, and, and very relevant for practitioners, right? Jim's a practitioner. I am not, so I needed his help. Come on down here and let's have a look. Let's see where we are. We've removed Z's rib cage, his viscera. Everything is gone. We're down to brass tacks here. All we have are, is the, the nerves coming out of the neck here. We, got, we have longus capitis and longus colli on the neck. We haven't really discussed those yet. But my focus is, is on the roots. Look at these beautiful roots of the brachial plexus. You see them? One, two, three, four, five on each side. Here, I'll count them for you. One, two, three, four, five roots. One, two, three, four, five roots. Now, anatomically, I'm wanting to notice the first ribs. Here, you see we got the first rib? Come up a little higher so we can get a little perspective on that. We have our first rib here. I've got to put my hands so you can actually see them. Okay, the first ribs are here. The manubrium is gone. The clavicle is pulled back here. And we're just looking at the first ribs like a horseshoe. And what I want you to notice here is this. We call this the thoracic outlet, right? Because this is the thorax and this is the way out, right? If you're going this way, we'll call it the thoracic inlet, right? But we're going this way, we'll call it the thoracic outlet. And the thing is, there's viscera that pass through here. Your esophagus passes through here. Your trachea passes through here. Your carotid arteries, your, 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 you know, are passing through here and branching off of the, of the heart tree right about here, right? So there's a lot of stuff that passes through here. But what I want to show you now is the way that the fourth and fifth roots of the brachial plexus actually straddle the first rib. You see that? It happens on both sides. I'm not making this up. It straddles the first rib. And here we actually have a little bit of remnant of the fascia. And this remnant fascia shows you how, the, how this fifth root of the brachial plexus actually passes through here, right? It wraps around the rib on its way from here. So coming out of the spine, right? Now, there's a thing called thoracic outlet syndrome. And I feel that this perspective gives us a couple insights into thoracic outlet syndrome. Jim, what's thoracic outlet syndrome? So in my clinical experience, um, thoracic outlet syndrome uh, generally is um, numbness or uh, paresthesia in the hand. So they can have tingling um, or burning pain or numbness in the hand. And usually it comes from some kind of impingement uh, up here in the neck somewhere. In clinic, we oftentimes uh, look at the scalenes because the scalenes, scalenes. run around those nerves mm -hmm. and go down onto the first rib right there. And okay. so we're often trying to release scalenes um, to release the pressure off of that. But yeah. as I look at where this nerve root is, I see that maybe uh, we're actually taking some pressure off of that first rib. Off of the first rib. Yeah, and allowing that rib to move a little bit more. And that might also be something to uh, be concerned with. Sometimes in clinic, we've actually had it where the patient was moving or we were doing some manipulations on them and that first rib releases and then they get some pressure release mm. from that, which I thought was a release off the scaling. Yeah. But maybe it might be happening at the nerve root itself. Well, let's come down here again and add the scalenes to our story. Okay, so we know that the first scalene, right, is coming from, it has got little threads going in here, and it's heading down to the first rib. So it does, in fact, stretch right across, is laying on top of these. Mm -hmm. The first scalene is following this pathway, I should say, something like that, yeah. right? And the second, sca second scalene is, is behind them, yeah. right? Uh, with its fibers coming to the transverse processes of the vertebrae mm -hmm. and coming this away. And then we have, we can add our clavicle in here, right, somewhere about there. And so we have this nerve surrounded by the scalene. So I totally get why you'd say that the scalenes are implicated in thoracic outlet syndrome. But those scalenes, that first scalene is also you know, holding on to the first rib. So uh, aberrant tensions on the first rib. And then also, let's remember this membrane, right? So we have, we have the um, 
thoracic outlet, as much of it as can be covered, right? See, the scalenes are stretching over here and creating like a tent over the first rib. And then the, that, the, the fascia is coming behind them. And the fascia has passing through it. We can see it right here. It has passing through it the nerve. Look at that. The nerve goes through yeah. the opening. Uh, and, and then, right, here's our fascia. And then look at how that nerve sneaks right, right through there. So when you're releasing tension on the fascia, you're talking to this nerve. Yeah. When you're releasing stress on this rib, right, because it's got nerve on either side of it, you're talking to these nerves. When you release tension on those scalenes. Now you were telling me something off camera that just scared the heck out of me, <laughs> okay, which was that one of the th treatments is to actually remove the first rib. Yeah. I just want to take advantage of Jim's wisdom and insight here to say there's more than one way to skin a cat, as it were, when it comes to treating thoracic outlet syndrome, which I know nothing about. Okay, I literally, <laughs> like I not, didn't even know what it was until five minutes ago. Okay, but I, what I can say is that any of y'all who mess with that kind of thing in whatever profession you have uh, scope of practice to do that with, look at that. Yeah. Like the, the, the way the nerves straddle the rib and, and what insights knowing about the position of the scalenes and the membranes and, and the freedom of the rib to move with the breath is going to have on on, the, on these, because these roots are forming the brachial plexus. That's it, folks. That's where your arm nerves come from. We take these roots, we, we turn them into a bunch of, a bunch of, look at this. It goes higgledy-piggledy, right? Look at, there's roots, and, there's, and they, the roots form branches, and then the branches form, form this M here, right? And, and, and all that, all that, there's your brachial plexus, right? Right here. That's the brachial plexus. So I just think that's cool. <laughs> so thank you, uh, Jim, so much. Thank you, Candy, for filming this. And thank you, Z, for your precious gift to us. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.